everybody. Welcome back to HVAC Technician Talk Podcast. Oh, man, I tell you what, we have been doing some Mardi Gras festivities. I'm glad it's finally over. Mardi Gras over. Festivities are pretty much over, and I'm glad to be done with it. I'm not young like I used to be anymore. The kids love it, but it uh, it's a little bit more challenging as you get older. It get wore out pretty easy. So uh, anyway, but we had a good time. The kids had a good time, and that's all that matters. So, yeah, let's uh, talk about a really hot topic that uh, I get questions about. And, you know, there's all kind of situations that you can do. Uh, and that's pistons or the fixed orifice or orifice, or whatever you want to call it, versus the TXV, the thermal expansion valve. And now we have EXVs, electronic expansion valves. Um, so... You know, there for a while, people were still using pistons like Goodman and Nordine and I think York. But now with this new Sear 2 stuff, uh, you know, everything has pretty much gone TXV. But pistons can still be used and still, you know, be used in a repair on, exist on, on an existing system. You take, for instance, if you've got a existing system that's single stage you know you not a multi-stage piece of equipment you can't do this but you know if you've got a older unit and it's got a bad expansion valve and supply house doesn't have a valve or you don't want to go through the trouble of messing with a valve you can take the expansion valve out and put a piston it's 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 not a problem I, i've done it several several times um you know Sometimes changing an expansion valve can be a chore. Sometimes it can be costly for the customer. Maybe the customer doesn't want to put that kind of money into the system, and maybe they don't have the money to change the system. So, you know, you can offer them a piston in the place of the expansion valve. You know, my big thing is, is you know, people used to knock me and, I've got some videos out there, you know, where I take a valve out and put a piston and they're like, oh, you killed the efficiency of that unit. And it's like, really? You really think that expansion valve is making that much of a difference? Because it's not. But, you know, you got mechanical expansion valves. You got weld-in expansion valves. Now, if it's a weld-in valve, that's a little bit trickier with a piston. You'd have to have a... Uh, a piston assembly, like I think you can get them through Linux and Ally stores, you know, where you'd have to weld those in in the place of the expansion valve. But if it's a mechanical valve, that uh, capillary tube assembly is made to hold a piston. It will hold a piston. But if you've got a weld-in valve, then you don't have anywhere to put a piston. So you're going to have to create a space to put a piston with a orifice assembly or you're going to have to go back with an expansion valve. So it's, uh, it's really your call, but you know, with this new sear too. And of course, like I said, if, it, if it's a multi-stage piece of equipment, then it's gotta be an expansion valve. You can't go work on a two stage system or anything like that and take a valve out and put a piston. You got to go back with an expansion valve. But if you're working on an old unit and it's single stage and the valve is bad and it'll hold a piston, you can absolutely take that valve out and replace it with a piston to get the customer going. And uh, it won't be an issue at all. I mean, Goodman has been using pistons up until Sear 2 on their 14 Sear equipment. Even on their 14 Sear, they were still using a piston. Now, I don't know about their Sear 2 equipment if they're using a piston or an expansion valve. I really don't know. I know Nordine was using a piston. Uh, York was using a piston. 
you know, but everybody else, Reman Rood or TXVs, Train American Standards, TXVs. Lennox was even still using pistons on a lot of their stuff. Um, some of their coils were still had pistons in them. Their cased coils, they still had pistons in them. So, but again, that was before the Sear 2 stuff. You know, now that Sear 2 is here, I would imagine everything is an expansion valve. But an expansion valve is, they're not like they used to be. I remember when I first started to trade and I was coming up, my dad was a huge fan of expansion valves. And we didn't have trouble with expansion valves like we do today. And, of course, a, a lot of it was that Copeland rust inhibitor issue. And uh, we had a lot of issues with TXV sticking because of the, the rust inhibitor inside the uh, Copeland compressor. And there was two ways you could cure that. Well, one way to really cure it. But a lot of manufacturers would recommend that you would put some AC Renew in it or they had their own solution, like Train had their own solution that you could put into the system. And they said that a lot of times it'll free the valve up, but if it doesn't, it's in the system to protect the new valve. So I used AC Renew a couple times, and it, it did okay, but we still had to end up changing the valve. But the AC Renew was in the system, so it protected the new valve, but that the Copeland rust inhibitor thing is not really an issue anymore. Uh, you know, and then depending on what manufacturer you deal with, you may not always get a Copeland compressor. You might get an LG now, like ICP has a lot of LGs in them. And, uh, those things have a bad reputation, but I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, they've, they've been fine for me. So, um, yeah, I don't have any complaints about those. The first generation wasn't that great, but the second generation, uh, LGs have been just fine. So you don't have to worry about the rust inhibitor issue with that. And then of course, trained American standard, they have the Alliance, which is made by Copeland. Uh, they just train in American standard, have Copeland, do a couple extra things to their compressor that is not in a Copeland. Uh, but you know, it, 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 it is essentially a Copeland compressor with, with an Alliance name. But anyway, we're kind of getting off topic here, but, but train, I don't think they had the issue as bad as everybody else with their expansion valves. I know I saw Ted use that solution, uh, a couple times on some of his videos, but it was only a couple times. Now I'm sure he's done it more than that off camera, but you know, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> if you've got a system that you need to get back up and running and it's out of warranty and it's, you know, R22 or even if it's 410A and it's a single stage and the, and the expansion valve can come out it's mechanical and it'll it's made to hold a piston you can absolutely throw a piston in there no problem whatsoever and have a good working system then again and again if you've got a weld in valve they do make piston assemblies that you can weld in in the place of that expansion valve to uh to get the customer going you know one's not really better than the other I mean, it, I, I, I guess a piston would be better because a piston is a fixed or is a fixed orifice. It only allows that much refrigerant to flow through it. An expansion valve is it's a mechanical part. It has moving parts, so it can go bad. Now you have these e, these EXVs now, the electronic expansion valves. Now look, a lot of people don't braze with nitrogen. You know, and I don't always braze with nitrogen myself either. I'll admit it. But any anytime I work on high efficiency, I make sure I always do because you do not want to clog up that that electronic expansion valve. And if you don't braze with nitrogen, you will clog up that electronic expansion valve. 
um, you know, you've got to use nitrogen on that high efficiency stuff. And another thing is, guys, if you if you if you swap big, here's a big thing. If you got a bad valve and you say, okay, well, I'm just going to put a piston in, you need to change the filter dryer. Okay. Change the filter dryer. If you're going to go on a system and you're going to tell the customer, look, you're, you have no warranty. The cheapest thing I can do for you to get you up and running is to take the valve out and put a piston. You need to change the filter dryer. Or if you're taking out an expansion valve to put another expansion valve, whether it's in warranty or not, change the filter dryer. Do not leave the old filter dryer, okay? I know you're not opening up the system for that long or whatever, but you've got to change the filter dryer. It is very, very important to change that filter dryer when you open up a system, especially when you're do changing the metering device. If you're taking out an expansion valve and putting in a piston to get somebody going, change the filter dryer. If you're changing an expansion valve with another expansion valve, Change the filter dryer. I can't stress that enough. Change the filter dryer, and that'll save you a lot of trouble. But, I mean, like I said, the great, the good thing about pistons is there's no moving parts. It's a fixed orifice. You don't have to worry about it. With an expansion valve, you do have moving parts. So, you know, you're taking a chance of failure. And the same thing with an electronic expansion valve. Electronic expansion valve, you've got... Um, Oh, what do they call it? The, uh, I cannot think of it. The, uh, I don't know. It's, it's the, it's the thing that goes on, on the, on the valve itself. It's a uh, man. I cannot think of it, but anyway, like if it falls off or it's not on there, right. The system will pump down and it'll make it look like a bad valve. But I can't, I cannot think of what, of what that, that part is called that goes on there. I mean, I've worked on so many of them and I cannot think of the name of that. Uh, it's not the power head. It's uh, something else. I, I don't know. I can't, it'll come to me after I record this podcast. But anyway, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. So yeah, pistons are great. There's no problem with changing out an expansion valve with a piston on a system that's not in warranty to get somebody by. Um, all, but only if it's single stage now, not on a two stage piece of equipment or anything like that. I, I've done it a bunch and, 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 and it works just fine. But change those filter dryers, guys. I'm telling you, change those filter dryers when you do those kind of repairs and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. Okay. Well, I think that's all I got for you guys on this one. I want to thank y'all for listening to the HVAC Technician Talk podcast. We'll talk to you guys on the next one. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Technician Talk podcast. We're always looking for recommendations on topics for the show. You can text us at 337-541-1252. Or email us at HVAC Technician Talk at gmail.com. We'll talk to y'all on the next one.